Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll start with you, comrades of the press. I then uh, want to recognize our director who has convened uh, this meeting. The political officer has done a wonderful work you know, in the past month and a half. And uh, he has uh, kept the Politburo informed and riveted to the uh, celebration of democracy within the party, which has been going on. Uh, from the onset, the president says these elections will be inclusive, open, and to the grassroots level. And that's exactly what they have been. Uh, there was a headline, I want to, why I'm saying this point, there was a headline in one of the newspapers that uh, the president was trying its secret, sacred cows or preferred uh, candidates, uh, those who were close to him. Uh, I don't know where that came from because it definitely never came from the commissar. It definitely did not come from the voters, the membership of ZANU-PF, who were, uh, were doing the selection of the candidates through the infallible system of the vote. <laughs> they had no consideration other than their empathy with the candidates. So if that, it didn't matter who you stood, where you stood in the party. It didn't matter where you stood uh, in terms of proximity or distance from the president. This was a communion between the candidate and the voters. And that's what he ensured in all the processes. So you saw many of my colleagues, maybe in the Politburo, our colleagues, who did not make it. The president did not lift his hand to try to reverse that process. So that article which came in one of the tablets to say the president is trying to save some sacred cows, it's a lot of hogwash. That is not simply true. And the reruns, one of the reruns, actually has served to confirm that the president had no sacred cows. <laughs> he supervised an open democratic election in, in, in Shimba West. And one of our colleagues did not make it. We congratulate the woman who came out on top. Uh, and we say to the com comrade who did not make it, the party is big. There's always something to do with the party. We have no losers and no winners in ZANU-PF. We only have a contestation to find out who the public thinks is the best to lead the party. And we don't do that in dark rooms by the evenings, by the night. Uh, we don't schmooze with the close uh, associates uh, like what happens in the other party. All over the world, including in the countries which are supporting Triple C, they all espouse the open vote as the highest form of expression of choice. Now, in Triple C, they are now debunking that age-old tradition that in the selection of candidates, there must be an election. <laughs> there can be a selection of candidates by the leadership. There has to be election. So ZANU-PF has lived to its billing that it is the party which brought democracy into this country by opening the primary elections wide, inclusive, open, and right down to the grassroots. This is the result of the membership of ZANU-PF choosing whom they want as their representatives in the party. So the Politburo today finalized that chapter, congratulating the winner, but extending an embracing hand to the losers that uh, the Zanupio family now has got the big focus on what is coming up, which is the national harmonized election. And we are making sure that we reach out to everybody and say, carry the banner of, of ZANU-PF, regardless of what may have gone in what was an in-house contestation for the best possible person to represent the people, not for power. Uh, the difference between ZANU-PF and Triple C. The triple C people are focused on power. That's why even when they get the, uh, pro, you know, certain levels of power at local government, they are not satisfied. They don't think running cities is uh, their responsibilities. Even after winning, I told you Harare has got a budget bigger than Malawi. 
uh, if I were the mayor of that town and I was answerable to, Ch to, the, to Chamisa and Triple C, I would try to run Harare well so that the voters can choose that Harare is run by a part of excellence. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be what it is today. So in our party, we don't contest for power. We contest on how to save the people. That's why we have this position of the very important person called the political commissar. So yes, the election, the Politburo, the extraordinary session of the Politburo has concluded the chapter on the elections. We are now focused on what was the whole purpose of that uh, massive uh, engagement of the party and the, and, uh, and the people, which is to select the best candidates for the national harmonized elections. We think we have the best possible team Zimbabwe can offer at the present time because it is coming from a selection, from an election process, not a selection process. That's why the political took so many hours. You know, the president was at cabinet today. He then ends up at the political the same day and is now just living. It's a serious job. He takes the, the, the work which is being done by the National Political Commissar very, very seriously. We have a, a, an additional comment. It is the discretion of the Politburo on the candidates. So in, it is one which calls for the reruns, which either confirmed or upset the previous results. And the latest results are the ones which stand. Teams were also sent out based on complaints which had been submitted because we had a special committee under him, in the, you know, autonomous from him, but under his authority, so that we, 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 we did not want his, the, the complaints to be colored by what he may be doing as political commissar because he's the one in the kitchen. So he, gave, he, he assigned the job to the legal secretary of the party, Comrade Mudenda, to deal with the complaints in an, in, in, in an autonomous and dispassionate manner. And the results were submitted, and we only focus where there have been new candidates, which has been announced. Uh, one is Marange, the other candidate was disqualified. Uh, the other one is in Chipinge, Robert Nyemuzo. There were allegations about him, and I have to withdraw my words because I was the one who had said that there were allegations to the effect that he was involved in, the, in, in illicit uh, brewing of uh, kachasu type a beer at his home. ZANPF is a, a party of fairness. Uh, we sent our teams on the ground. We also employed the state apparatus because some of these things infringed on national laws. And the state apparatus, which is ZRP in particular, they went and made their investigation. And it also turns out that even the other arm, we know we have three arms of uh, power in this country, the executive, the judiciary, and parliament. This same candidate, yet the judiciary exercise its legal wisdom on what had happened, on, on, on the allegations which had been made about him, and they dismissed them. He, he won his court cases. So on that basis, the ZANU-PF had no, had the joy of welcoming Robert Nyemuzo, who had originally won in Chipinge to be the candidate at the next elections. That means Paul Sungazi has been stood down because we investigated the veracity of the allegations against Robert Nyemuzo and they had no basis. So he's back as a candidate of the party. We, I want to go further to say that uh, further any other issues which may arise shall be dealt with as administrative issues by the National Political Commissar in consultations according to the hierarchy of the party. We have closed the Politburo has closed its file on the primaries and the selection of candidates. Well, the winning candidate is here, so thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so, the team, so this is it. Uh, we are 
We are not going back to that. It's a, we, we don't live in elections forever. We are always a forward-looking party. We close a chapter, we start a new one. And the most important one is now to fill this term of competent, elected Zimbabwean candidates who the ZANU, ZANU, ZANU PF membership have voiced their support for through the vote to contest the selected candidates <coughs> of the one-man band show of Chamisa and his cohorts of NGOs. We want to see who will win candidates imposed top-down by the leadership opposing candidates voted bottom-up by the grassroots in the elections. This is, in summary, the contest which is coming up between the two sets of candidates. We want to, you know, those who have gone through an election process as opposed to those who have gone through a selection process. Uh, at this moment, they go end up market the Kuzanu PF. Tunoita kuti vanhu wa vote. Uko kuno saruzwa kuti yakakora ndi EP ine ukama na 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 nemfudzi the EP is na ukama ndi EP. We don't do things like that in Zanu PF. That is uh, the aspect of the elections. I would want to entertain questions on that before I go on to the next uh, phase uh, which maybe uh, I depends on the national political political commissar if he still wants to be around but he uh, He's been a busy man. If there are any questions concerning elections and candidates, I want to entertain them right now. I don't want to clutter uh, the, 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 the mind of a man, who has done a, a man who has done a fantastic work. He won commendation from the Politburo and the President for this exercise in democracy. Remember, rather than ballot to, rather than bullet to office in 1979, we chose ballot to office. So DNA of elections and democracy is in ZANU-PF from the rebirth of the Republic, regardless of the prospect that we had a almost overrun the Rhodesian army. We said ballot to office, not bullet to office. So we keep to that tradition. We are the first one ever in the world as a national liberation to do that, and we are still living to our billing. We don't care about other people commenting about our democracy. Ours is homegrown. It is no teachers from anybody. It is prepared to, to learn the experience of the others. But it is not going to accept being taught democracy by outsiders. I want to thank you and open it thank to you. the political commissar. If you have got any questions concerning the primary elections, which have been closed now by the Politburo, and the upcoming national harmonized elections, which is his new task. He's probably much more excited about the new task than about <laughs> Because we, we focus on winning. We don't focus on, uh, on, on post-mortems. That's true. Yeah, mm. On yesterday's events. Uh, there have been many innovations made by President E. D. Nangagwa and his Second Republic. And there have also been new approaches, creative approaches, on how we conduct the national affairs. One of the centerpiece policies of the president is devolution, decentralizing power. Yesterday, we had the experience of celebrating the 43rd anniversary of independence in Mount Darwin. Some of you were there. Some of you watched it from the press. It was a marvelous show of patriotic fervor by the Zimbabweans 43 years later that they really, really appreciate their independence. Yeah, Mount Darwin is the cradle of the armed liberation struggle at the point where it is implanted into the country as opposed to cross-border attacks or hit and run, or roving rebel uh, early groups who were in the fledgling stage of the army and were groping for a way as to how we would confront the enemy. Uh, Mount Darwin is a qualitative leap 
in the way the national liberation struggle was, was waged. Because for the first time, the genius of our revolutionary intellectual, Herbert Chitepo, was merged with the military ingenuity of General Magama Tongo Gara, Comrade Tongo. And they then adopted the Maoist strategy of fish in the water. So they deployed 45 guerrillas who spent two years teaching people mount, mount down politics. Only when the people were saturated with the political consciousness of the fight was a gun fired by the late Solomon Mujuru at our tenor farm. So it was befitting that we go back to the roots of the implantation of a, the army, which is now Zimbabwe Defense Forces, on the route of Zimbabwean soil, without constant recourse to the neighboring countries for safety. We were confronting the enemy within. That is the distinction of Herbert Chitepo and General Tongo Gara. We hail the receptive aspect of the people of Mount Darwin, Mashona and Central, because they received this message, which I'm talking about, in fish and water. They became the water, they became the fish. And yesterday was a celebration of their role, because they eventually taught all other Zimbabweans that we can support our army, we can make the white army a blind and deaf Goliath, whilst we make our common armor guerrillas, a zipper and zandler, a clear-eyed and open hearing ear of the people of Zimbabwe so that the whites could not identify who was beating them. That's how we won the war. So this was a celebration of the, this role by Mashoda and West. The last year we pioneered Bulawayo as an urban, but that's an urban center, a major one, the number two in the country, and the celebrations went well. This year the president took it a notch higher he went to Mashonaland Central, but this time not even to the major city in Mashonaland Central, to Mount Darwin. <laughs> it was a good thing. I do hope that this practice will extend on and on because it recognizes the rural people as the bastion of the national liberation struggle. They watched what they've sacrificed for being played out in Harare in Bulawayo in the major cities, whilst they themselves were the main players in the original fight. So we are paying homage to the rural population by going to Mount Darwin, because that was the backbone of Zanla and Zipra forces during the war. So it was a good thing. We held the president for that decision. We are also very happy that along the process, he gave one of the most scintillating speeches ever about the progress which is being made by the Second Republic in all its aspects. That has made the people of Zimbabwe have hope again. I always talk, to, talk here that ZANU-PF of President Mnangagwa and the Second Republic has rekindled a can-do spirit among Zimbabweans. There is no, a new confidence that we can do it. And that message is resonating because the rural people see from Vodza. They see roads being built. They see their access to markets being facilitated. They see traditional grains being distributed, inputs being distributed. They see dams. They see canals and long uh, forgotten irrigation schemes coming back to life, changing their life. You know, auction flows are on. Rural people are going into the auction and are going be, they will be begging anything between 800 and 1 billion US dollars in cash from all the, prog pro pro the, the, the progressive policies of, of ZANU-PF in the rural areas. So this progress has caught on, on and the speech of the president was a real master speech, ma masterpiece. It touched on what matters to the people of Zimbabwe, which is the reason why thousands thronged Mount Darwin to come and also catch a grasp of their leader right at that level of the grassroots at a major event of national importance, the independence of the fourth, third anniversary of Zimbabwe. We, we Politburo also took note of the success of Mashona and 
central in a first class organization of this event. There was food galore. Uh, we took town urban food <laughs> to the rural area. They were Nando's, they were chicken in, they were all sorts of things which they associate with, this, with the bright lights of the cities. They were in Mount Darwin yesterday. It was, a, it was a fantastic show of patriotism and, you know, general happiness by the Zimbabweans. Uh, the president says, Apana watino siya, apana njimbe inosara. Here is a concrete example of him taking that mantra right down to the grassroots level of the Zimbabwean society, an area which in colonial times was never considered of any consequence. Kumakore Kore, Tatarisanani Zambezi Valley, and all other areas on the periphery of the, of the plateau. Now they feel they are part of the great Zimbabwean society, nation. This is a good thing. That's what they fought for in the war, and now they are being part of this inclusivity by the president. The prerogative of when the campaign starts lies with the head of state, the president. And he is a constitutionalist. There are clear timelines stated in the 2013 constitution as to how we gravitate towards election day. I can assure you he is a good lawyer. You know, he went to Lancaster House as one of the key advisors who said no bullet, no bullet to office, but ballot to office. He's a constitutionalist. He is preoccupied with that, but at the right time, the announcements will be made. Uh, what I can assure you is that ZANU-PF never stops campaigning. We campaign as a matter of life and death, <laughs> ZANU-PF. We, we continuously campaigning. What only comes in is certain events like elections which make us up the tempo. We only up the tempo of a process which is ever live in ZANU PF. <laughs> because it's like in the war, you can't afford not to politicize because the intelligence will you will lose and you'll be killed if you don't politicize the people. So you've got to be constantly alert and alive and vigilant. That's what the, that's why ZANU PF. The, the campaigning is a way of life <laughs> for us. It's a way of life. If you ask what ZANPF is, we say com campaigning to get the, the legitimacy from the people is our way of life because we don't rule because the people, fo we, we fought for the people. We don't rule by the right of that we fought. We rule by the fact that what we fought for is what people of Zimbabwe want. And if we satisfy what we fought for, the people of Zimbabwe would want us more. Mm -hmm. And that's what we live by. So leave that to the president, but definitely it will be according to the constitutional strictures of the country. But we in ZANU-PF, we got our shoes on, man. We really have got our shooters and our, uh, we, are, we, we, are out of the, we are out of the dressing room. Yeah, we are there on the pitch. <laughs> I don't know whether it is the same with the other guys. <laughs> because they can't stop quarreling and their masters are deserting them. We had a very nice congratulatory message from the American government. I think you saw it of our National Day. And the host of other countries sent, I mean, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs was inundated with the messages of good congratulations and goodwill, including from the United States. I think one, theirs was one of the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was remarkable by its toning down of some of the issues which had been uh, alienated us from the major democracies of the world. We respect the Americans as a major democracy. They may have their own issues, but we respect them. And we are not the ones who made them great. So we have no issues with their greatness. If anything, we want some of their capital to come to Zimbabwe and make us change our life. That is, our, that is our ultimate wish. So it was nice. And it was nice also that the British government saw it fit to invite President Mnangagwa to the coronation of King Charles. Remember, as a young man in 1980, he lowered the Union Jack in Rufaro Stadium to give us independence. It's nice. And we are hearing the grapevine that uh, the bonds of our heroes of the first Chimrenga may finally be on their way back. So there is a whole flurry 
of virtuous diplomacy going on around President Munangagwa and the Second Republic. I repeat, there is a whole flurry of virtuous diplomacy going on around President Munangagwa and the Second Republic. It speaks, it speaks volume or volumes about the success which is notching up as he turns Zimbabwe around from a pariah to a state which is respected on the global stage. It's nice, it's nice. competent, well-structured, well-educated people with a lot of resources. They need their place in the sun. And President Mnangagwa is giving Zimbabweans their place in the sun. I thank you.